Hi guys, Dr. Colbreth here with a quick introduction to the interference of waves from two sources. When we talk about interference, we're talking about the phenomenon that happens when we add the effects of multiple waves together, if we have two waves present in the same place at the same time. In particular, if we add two waves together of the same frequency, we observe some interesting effects that you might not expect. And before we get started, I want to provide a little bit of introduction, uh, specifically with a property of sine waves. Specifically, when we add two sine waves together of the same frequency, the result is always a third sine wave of the same frequency. I know that when I learned this, I found it to be a little bit unintuitive. It seems like if you have two sine waves, like the ones we have here, that when you add them together, you get some lumpy shape, not a perfect sine wave. So I made this animation to show how this works. We're going to add the effects of the light blue wave to the orange wave. And here in this slide, I've indicated the positive portions of the light blue wave with green vertical lines and negative portions of the light blue wave with red vertical lines. When we add the effects to the waves together, we're just going to add the blue wave displacement to the orange wave, and so the green portions are going to get shifted upward, and the red portions are going to be shifted downward. So I'm going to go ahead and set this in motion. You can see we're adding the positive regions to the sine wave and subtracting the negative regions from the orange sine wave, and the result is this purple wave, which is in fact a third sine wave of the same frequency of the two waves that made it. And so this is true no matter how we try to add these sine waves together. Whenever we add two sine waves of the same frequency, the result is a third sine wave of that same frequency. Now, although we get a sine wave in every case, the amplitude of that sine wave depends on the two particular waves that we're adding together, how they are related in space relative to one another. And so on this side we can see uh, we've got two sine waves and we're adding them together to produce the purple sine wave. And when those two sine waves overlap exactly, we end up with a maximum uh, amplitude of our resultant wave right here, and when they are anti-aligned, we end up with zero sine wave, an amplitude of zero. And so the relative spacing or the relative alignment of these two waves, we call this the phase relationship between the two waves, determines how big the amplitude is of the resultant wave, whether or not they're exactly overlapping or whether or not they are exactly anti-parallel uh, to one another. So the key to all interference problems which is the superposition of two waves of the same frequency, is that we need to calculate the path length difference between each of the two waves. In other words, how far does one wave have to travel to reach the listener versus how far the other wave has to travel to reach the listener. And that path length difference is going to determine how well aligned the waves are relative to one another. And so from here on, we're going to be talking specifically about the interference of sound waves. And we're going to start off with sound waves in one dimension or when the waves are propagating along the x-axis. So here we have our model. We have a listener over on the right. And we have two sources, a blue source and a green source, represented here by the megaphones. And we're going to start off with just shifting one source relative to the other. So now the green source is traveling a shorter distance to reach the listener than the blue source. And so the path length difference is the distance from the green source to the blue source. And in this case, the path length difference is just kind of an arbitrary amount. We can see that the resultant wave is a third sine wave of the same frequency, uh, but it's not at a maximum value and it's not at a minimum value. But if we shift the source to a specific position, like this position right here, now when we add the two waves together, we can see we get nothing out. This is what we call a position of maximum destructive interference. And so this path length difference, the different distance between the blue source and the green source, in this particular case, that path length difference is exactly half of a wavelength. There's half of a cycle that separates these two waves. So now uh, the green wave travels a distance to reach the observer, and the blue wave has to travel one half a cycle more to get there. And so no matter where they are in their uh, displacement, Wherever they are in their cycle, as these waves oscillate up and down, we find that their effects exactly cancel one another out, and this is the condition for total destructive interference. And if we shift the green wave again, or the green source again, now we've shifted it here, and before I set an emotion, I want to point out that this distance, this path length difference between the blue wave and the green wave, is exactly a full cycle. We see a full sine wave, or specifically a cosine wave here, uh, in the picture between the blue wave and the green wave, so they're sep separated by exactly a full cycle. So now when we set it in motion, we can see we get a much larger wave. In fact, we get a position of maximum constructive interference, maximum uh, amplitude of our resultant wave, and that's because while the green wave travels some distance to reach the observer or the listener, the blue wave travels exactly one cycle more. So the waves are indistinguishable at the point of the observer and their effects add for maximum constructive effect. Before I jump into an example problem, we need to put this all on some mathematical footing. 
And the first piece for that is going to be delta r, which is the path length difference. Your book also uses the symbol delta d when talking specifically about one-dimensional interference and then delta r for two-dimensional interference, but it's the same concept, the path length difference in both cases, so I think it's best to just use one symbol. And so delta r is gonna be the path length difference, the difference in the path traveled from one source to the observer and the other source to the observer. How much further does one wave travel than the other to reach the point of the observer? And we care about two special cases. The first special case we care about is when delta r is equal to m times lambda, where m is an integer, 0 or 1 or 2 or 3, any integer. And in that case, what we end up with is that the waves exactly overlap, and we call that a condition of maximum constructive interference. So in other words, one wave travels exactly one cycle further than the other to reach the observer, or two cycles further, or three cycles further, or in the case where the sources are exactly in the same location, or the waves travel exactly the same distance, that's when they have zero path length difference between the two waves, and in that case we also get maximum constructive interference. On the other hand, if the path length difference adds up to be half a cycle difference between the two waves, then we get destructive interference. And we show this mathematically by saying that delta r, which is the path length difference, is equal to m plus a half times lambda, where m is once again an integer. And so then the possible path length differences that allow for total destructive interference end up to be half a lambda, one and a half lambda, two and a half lambda, three and a half lambda. In each case, the path length difference adds up to be half a cycle so that the displacements of the two waves exactly cancel one another out. When one wave is going up, the other wave is going down. Based on the difference in path length, the waves traveled to reach the point of the observer. So now I'm gonna work an example problem. This was my introduction to one-dimensional interference, and that should make all of these ideas a little bit more concrete, so stay tuned.